All right, Jordan, kick us off. Hi, Chris. Um, Jordan Wright from Combat Sports UK. Uh, so this is going to be your 15th fight for PFL. What's your favourite one? It's going to be my, my what fight? I'm sorry, I lost you. 15th? Wow. Jeez, that's crazy. Um, my favourite fight so far was um, probably beating Bubba last year in the semi-final. There's a lot of beef kind of like there is right now between Brendan and I. So when there's a little extra emotion, those feel best. And how do you feel about coming into enemy territory? Oh, I feel fine about it. It's not really enemy territory in sport. The energy will be uh, cheers for him, booze for me. But I like the energy nonetheless. Uh, I was telling someone this yesterday, but... It was a lot more difficult to be in quarantine in quiet and in the dark than it is to feed off of, for me, negative energy. I'll take any energy rather than nothing. Thanks for your time, Chris. Thank you. <clears throat> Ethan. Hey, Chris. Ethan Albin, Tunnel Vision Sports. Your opponent, Brendan Lockney, has never been finished. You know, How do you plan on changing that on Saturday? I mean... My last opponent, Kyle Bokchiak, was never finished either, and I, I fixed that in about a minute, too. So I plan on uh, fixing it the same exact way with my shin to his forehead. All right. And uh, as someone who spends a lot of time on uh, Long Island, I go to school out there. I was wondering, what's your, what's like your motivation to get back there, you know? Well, my family, my daughter, she's over on Fire Island right now. She's enjoying the beach weather. I was on FaceTime with her this morning. She was like rubbing it in my face a little bit that she's over at the beach, enjoying her bacon and her food. And uh, I just, I miss her. I miss my girlfriend. And uh, I want to get back to the last couple of weeks of summer that we have left over there. Get out on the boat, enjoy the water. Thanks, Chris. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. Miriam. Hi, Chris. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, um, I'm from the BBC and we're doing a bit of a beginner's guide to the PFL for audiences who might know not know anything about it. So I've just got a few kind of quick fire questions and my cameraman, I think, is in front of you. So you're kind of looking down the barrel. Um, so if I was an alien who just landed on a Earth and ask what is the PFL what would you say I would say that the PFL is the premier mixed martial arts organization if you want to watch real sport if you want to watch a real sport season then this is where you need to be and this is what you need to be tuned into why does it matter so much why does the PFL matter so much or why yeah. does MMA matter? The, the PFL and, and kind of to you personally. Well, the PFL matters because the PFL is an up and coming organization that follows major sport in the world. We have a regular season, we have a postseason, and we have a championship. And the reason that that's important to me is I grew up in America where we have a lot of big major sport and people like to see just like here with football they want to see that regular season followed by a playoff and it, to culminate in a championship not to just see fights here and there that are politically picked by the matchmaker so this is where real sport exists in mma that's brilliant and why uh, how, how kind of exciting is it that it's coming to london I think it's great that it's we've gone international here and that we're in London. I think that England is a country to me from home, from what I understand, a very tough culture, a very uh, like fight oriented culture. They respect boxing. It, it's uh, deeply rooted uh, here. And I think that it's ne very natural for MMA now to pop here as well. And for you personally, what is the best? kind of feeling about fighting and when you're mid fight and you know the energy is going through you can you just describe that feeling to me 
absolutely the 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 feeling is it's a feeling of being alive like like you can't even imagine the rush of your natural hormones and chemicals and and just the back and forth with another person who is trained to such a high level that they can take anybody apart being in there with someone sharing their cage with someone at that level and that speed it's a it's a rush just like you see someone who skydives just like you see somebody who does any type of extreme sport it's the same type of rush that we chase in there and uh it's the highs and the lows of that that make it so exciting and what just finally what would it mean to win and and win that prize money uh i mean i i listen i've been chasing this for for this is the fourth year now um and it's just a must for me for my legacy and uh for my family it's uh it it just needs to be the feather on the on the cap for me great thank you very much thank you tim Hi, Chris. Uh, Tim, Sport on Spain. Hey, Tim. Oh, you muted yourself, Tim. Sorry. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So you just you talk you mentioned there, Chris, about the the rush, the, the sort of adrenaline rush you get in, in, in the cage and, and when you win. I I can only imagine the experience of that. I'm just curious to know what are you going to do after the way tomorrow? How do you sort of focus yourself? to not get too excited and, and think about that as opposed to try and keep calm. You know, what do you do in the 24 hours before to, to, to in, in, in ahead of what's going to be such a massive occasion? Yeah. The 24 hours before is wild. Some fighters won't admit to you fully what goes through your mind, but there's this, like, I, I think it's healthy, but there's a cycle of, of mental, uh, like things that play out. Uh, the storyline plays out in your head and it start, it's positive, M far majority of it is all positive, visualization of your win, of your victory, celebrating your team. But then there's also like, you know, you know, in your mind, you might face uh, adversity as well. You may be in tough spots and like anxiety kind of can come over you a little bit. The butterflies, and those are natural things for me. I need to feel those things as a fighter. If I feel nothing, that's when I'm scared as a fighter because I know that that it could be a flat fight for me where I can't get my my adrenaline up. I can't get pumped up and excited. I need to harness the those butterflies and the nervous energy and channel that into uh, a great fight. Okay, cool. Um, and just one other thing, it's, it's, uh, as you, as you said, uh, MMA, it's, it's getting a real profile over here in the UK. Yeah, I mean, boxing's big, obviously as we know, but MMA is really catching up. This is the debut though, for the PFL, obviously we're familiar with other brands and the PFL has got its unique format knockout. Uh, I think it would be a real uh, hit, hit with the fans, but there is a certain amount of pressure, I guess. How do you feel as like a, the, the USA, you know, almost a representative coming over to London, uh, and be being sort of part of the PFL headliner. Oh, I feel great. I've I've trained and competed my whole career to be th this guy in this spot and to and to climb even higher. I want to be the man. I want to be the champion. I want to be the face of the organization, and I want to help climb and and take take the league to new heights. So I embrace it all. I don't run or I'm not scared of uh, attention or of pressure. That's what. I, you know, I was built as a kid back home on Long Island in, in small little dark room wrestling rooms, uh, to be hardened to this type of stuff. And I'm just, I think I'm perfect for it. Great. Okay. Thanks very much, Chris. Thank you. Curtis. Hey, Chris, this is Curtis Calhoun with MMA news. Good to talk to you again, man. Hey, what's up, Curtis? I'm doing good. Hey, uh, so my question for you is, uh, you know, you've been really open and honest about everything in terms of the growth that you made from a mental perspective entering this season. What have you made of other MMA fighters around the sport, like Patty Pimblett, Anthony Pettis, talking about mental health and the stigma that comes with it and, uh, you know, just being open and honest about it? Yeah, I mean, I I just 
give those guys a ton of credit for speaking out and to being one of the the first men to do so in our sport, especially here. Um, it's so important to let everyone know, any fan know, any anyone who follows the sport, anyone involved in the sport that there's it's okay um to to have negative feelings it's natural it's part of life but you need to talk to someone you need to speak out um people love you there are people out there that will support you and um i just tip my cap to those guys i know patty dealt with some personal stuff and i feel for him uh for that and um you just you wish that you could go back and and to to speak to them i've i've had some situations in my life where some people i knew things like that happened and i just i wish i could go back and let them know that they could talk to me or, or say anything and that i could i could just listen and it's hard for men sometimes cuz we want to be tough and we want to have bravado and not show any weakness but we're all just people and and uh it's okay and one last follow up for me on that. Do you feel like MMA fighters, you know, casual fans kind of look at fighters and athletes as almost like superheroes, right? So do you feel like somebody in your position, you know, talking about those feelings and mental health and all that is is almost more difficult just because you're put on a pedestal? Yeah, absolutely because in this sport, we're all looking around before somebody speaks up like does that make you look weak to speak about it? And my, I have a close friend. Uh, he's a UFC fighter. He's fighting this week too, Jared Gordon. And uh, if you follow him, all he does is speak up about substance abuse and mental health. And his whole platform is dedicated to letting anyone know who follows him that they can come and they speak to him and that there's people that you can talk to. And Jared is... Uh, Man, he's one of the just champions of the sport for his honesty, for his openness. Um, there, We need more of guys like him and girls like him in, in this sport and uh, in, in all sport um, because we are in the spotlight and it helps to show the, the kids out there and the fans that that we're there for them too. Thanks, Chris. All the best this weekend. Thank you. Mills. All American made Chris Wade. How's it going, man? MMA locker room here, part of Pub Sports Radio. Hey, what's up? Nothing much, man. I just want to give you some appreciation on your MMA journey and where it got you at now and how you just, you know, have so much perseverance and never quit. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, now I got a question for you, man. Last year, uh, when you did the fight with Bubba Jenkins during the way-offs, I never forget it, man. That moment right there, I think uh, you started to turn heel a little bit. I think he was on the weigh-ins, and he said something like, God won't save you in this fight. And at that moment right there, I realized who the real gangster of PFL was, and that's Chris Wade. Kind of reminds me of when Hulk Hogan turned uh, NWO on WWF. And um, I'm loving everything that is bringing right now. And um, how do you feel that's going to – uh, captivate you in this fight going on with Brandon because uh, it seems like it's good guy versus bad guy and they're trying to turn you into the bad guy but man this is all American Chris Wade so how you feel about that <laughs> yeah they're trying to like force me to turn heel and I'm okay with it you know I, I'll embrace that I'm in England right at my heart at my core I'm like I am like you said like all American a good guy I'm there to fight for people who can't fight for themselves and to speak up for people who don't have a voice. That's my, my nature. It's a, it's uh I feel that when I'm done with fighting that I, I want to be, I want to continue down a path similar to that, whether it's in politics or it's getting things done fighters um, on a more wide basis where we're, maybe we're, we have a union one day or we have, uh, an association that helps us all do better, but I, I embraced, um, 
whatever they want to spin and turn me into. If you want me to be the bad guy, if anybody who comes to me, insults me, talks down on me, their people talk down on me, I will flip a switch so fast and you'll see a whole different guy. But until you do so, I'm the nicest guy in the world to you. Got it, man. I can't wait. Can't wait. Any predictions for us out here uh, this coming Saturday? Yeah, I, mean, I truly believe that I'm going to submit him. He's never uh, experienced somebody like me before. He thinks that he has, but I promise you that he hasn't. And um, I don't know whether it's going to be a choke or whether I take his arm or whether I take his leg, but I'm going to take something and I'm going to bring it back home with me. I promise you that. Oh, yeah, brother. I did. <laughs> I can't wait, man. Thank you. All right. Any last questions for Chris before we let him go? All right. I have a fan question for you, Chris. How does it feel to have the most heated rivalry in PFL history? <laughs> I mean, if you, it just... It feels natural, you know, I'm not, I, I want you all to understand that this isn't contrived. This isn't, uh, the PFL is not asking us to, to go about and do this. This is just really both of us not liking one another and wanting to take each other's heads off. And um, I embrace it. I don't back down from people who want to be bullies. He wants to be a pompous, cocky bully, and I'm going to rip his head off for it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, everyone.